Another block is simply a refined supply and demand zone. Now, if you've been following me through this channel, you understand that the study that I use is built on the concept of supply and demand and as well on the concept of liquidity. Another block is simply a specific candlestick or a specific number of candlesticks which we assume is going to trigger a supply or a demand zone. And now for us to assume that this specific number of candlestick or specific candlestick is going to trigger a supply zone, there are certain steps we need to follow. The aim of this video is to walk you through those particular steps or specific steps that we need to follow to identify these candlesticks. My name is Divine and I'll be right back. Now, the first step is for you to identify the supply or demand zone. And basically, there are about four types of supply or demand zone. We have the rally based rally, we have the rally based drop, we have the drop based drop, and we have the drop based rally. Now, I made a video about all these types of supply and demand in details. So, I will recommend you watch my previous video so you're able to understand this type of supply and demand. However, I'm still going to explain or show you this type of supply and demand when we go to the chat. Now, this first step is for you to refine the supply and demand zone. And one of the ways you can refine the supply and demand zone is by simply studying the price action that occurred at the supply or demand zone. And when it's already finished, what you have to do is to represent it with a candlestick, which can be a dodgy candlestick shooting star, pin bar, or even hammer. So any of these candlesticks, you can use it to represent that demand or supply zone. Now, the next step is for you to identify volume. Identifying volume can simply mean, can simply mean identifying momentum cam or identifying chart pattern that shows momentum in the market. I'm going to show you all of this when we go to the charts. Now, the fourth step or the first step is to allow price to create or engineer liquidity. Price engineering liquidity is simply price creating scenario that allows you to think that you have missed out from the market or you are meant to be selling instead of you to be buying. So price try, price try to create a fixed scenario in the market just so you can make a very, you know, unplanned decision. Now, the fifth rule or fifth step is to understand that this strategy or this particular style does not work all the time. 70% chance that it's going to work and 30% chance that it's not going to work. So if you're, if you're able to understand this fifth step, you tend to hide, have a way to, you know, manage your risk and keep your psychology on, set, on check. Let's go to the chat. So I'll explain all these things on the chat. I'll see you on the chat. Now here on the chat, what I'm going to do is to follow the steps I explained earlier on. And now the first step is to identify the supply or demand zone. And for us to be able to do that, we have to go to the higher time frame and understand the direction or the long term direction of the market. So what I'm going to do now is to go to the higher time frame. And for me, higher time frame could be the daily time frame or the four hours time frame. Mostly, I use day time frame to understand the direction of the market. Now, on day time frame, now what, I, what I'm going to see here is that with my eye, I can see that price is in an uptrend. But what is the trend saying? What is the trend line or market is saying? Now, if I'm to use my trend line to understand the trend of the market, I will see that price. I'll see that price is in an uptrend, but price broke below the trend, showing us that the trend is weak. Price was respecting it here, respecting it here, respecting it here. And on the fourth touch, it broke below the trend, showing us that it's weak. And this is happening on, on the time frame. Which is given that okay, this breakout would be a very strong one. So what do we do? We we'll back out our point of interest. And for me, our point of interest is simply this area that price broke out from. Let's see what's happening in this place on the lower, on the lower time frame. And this becomes our area of concern. This is what we pay attention to. 
and now for us to do that we have to go to the four hours time frame and understand the market structure now on the four hours time frame what you can tell you is that it's in a downtrend and if i'm to mark my market structure what i'm seeing is that this is break of character to the downside break, break of market structure to the downside this is the first break, break of this is the low let me expand this thing so we clearly see it properly okay yes this is another low can even use it as the low but i don't want to happen this is a low and this is a low okay. this is a low that means price is in a downtrend creating lower lows and lower highs let me clear up this stuff so we have a little distraction of everywhere Now this trend line is is dead the line of two dollars going down trend, so I'll remove it since we're not going to use it. Now our consign is this zone here. This is our consign. This is our area of consign. And what do we do now? We're going to go to the thirty minutes time frame or the one hour time frame and understand what is happening in this box here. So let's go. To, let's go first go to the one hour time frame. On the one hour time frame as well, we are seeing that price is creating lower lows. Low, lower low, low. So price is price is giving us a bearish signal on the one hour time frame. And what we, what we do now is to identify our supply zone. And for me already, I, I explained the types of supply zones we have and how the cycle works. So if you want to understand it properly, because I wouldn't want to make this video to be very long, you can go back to my previous video that I made about supply and demand zone. Now, what I can see here is that I'm, I'm seeing a type of supply zone which is referred to as the rally base rally. Sorry. The drop base drop, sorry. And this is the drop. This is the base. And this is the drop. The drop base drop. Now, if you have studied this price action that happened in this box now, what you can see here is that. Price is expecting other blocks in this zone. Now, first, price gave us a high here. Retracement to cut the high, showing us that oh, we are creating higher, we are creating a bullish trend. So people are going to be putting their what is it called? People be wanting to buy from this other block to continue the trend. And as you can see, people will be targeting these highs here and putting their stop losses above. They are below this line here. This is where our stop losses will be. So this is where there will be plenty of stop losses. And this will be the targeting of that TP. It's high here. But see what price did. Price respected the other block, but could not break out, take out this high. And price filled the other block. So that this other block now, for me, becomes my point of interest. So this is where I would likely this is where I would have took taken this trade if I took the trade this point here and my stop loss is going to be above this high here and see what I've actually got now. My take profit could have been could have been at this week here. So if I took this trade, which I did not take it, it could have been take profit here. And my stop loss at this zone here. So this could have been my my point of interest. I would, I would have entered from, and people could have people would have been buying from this other block and thinking price is going to take out this high. Now, if I'm to forward this, if I'm to you know apply this strategy in the next one now, all I see and I'm seeing that I'm seeing a supply zone as well, which is referred to as the the rally base drop so here becomes our point of interest we're going to study what is happening in this box here this is where we're going to study what is happening in this box here remember this type of this type of point of interest this type of supply zone is referred to as the rally base 
drop. So apparently here is the, here is the base here. This is the base here. Web price. This is the rally. This is the base, and this is the drop. Now, if you have to study this price action that happened here now, what are we going to see? Let's go to that same time frame so it will be a bit clearer. Now, on the that same time frame, price is creating price is creating higher highs, showing us that we're going to be buying that this bullish this presence of bulls in the market, and people will actually be buying from this from every other block on this trend. And now, if you see, this is the first. This is the other block where people are buying from this one. The first one. Second one, people are buying from this place. As you can see clearly, they bought from here and thinking price was going to go up. Now, if you watch closely now, you've seen that price is creating higher highs and higher, high, higher highs. And <clears throat> people think that this presence of this presence of volume here and probably they will buy from this from this angle here and what can you see let me move this other one so that we won't confuse ourselves what can we see here even if price is creating higher highs and higher highs and higher higher lows people were expecting to buy from this other block here and what you can see clearly is that price came back to this other block and filled the other block now price is not going to stop there. Price will still create since then I look at if price wants to buy. So this place becomes the new order block that people want to buy from because they're seeing a trend and they're seeing volume showing a momentum candle in here. So what did you see? Price created a, a higher a high, came back to this other block, gave us another high, and finally filled this other block. So my point of interest now is simply to wait for price to come back to this zone so I can sell from the trend. So this is a possible setup for me. Simply going back to this place and getting my short position and continue the trend. My stop loss here. My take profits here. So the only thing I have to do is just to patiently wait and monitor this this strategy, monitor this setup until price comes back to this zone and give me a take profit or a loss. Now because this thing does not work all the times, it works 70% of the time and 30% of the time. I'm going to apply a very good risk management on the charts here. And one of the best ways to apply good risk management is knowing how much I'm going to risk and be willing to lose it so that you don't have to you don't have to close the trade or you not, you not be able to hold it to reach the profit or whatever. Now for me to for me to actually confirm that this place is going to be valid. First, I was able to identify the supply zone. Secondly, I was, able, I was able to analyze that and, and put it to a particular candlestick, specific candlestick. Now I'm seeing the dodgy candlestick that failed, and here there was a series of plenty bunch of can, um, dodgy candlestick here, which is known as my point of interest, or you can still call it a, a refined order block or whatever, but I don't want to call it order block because order block fails. So this place is my point of interest here, and this is the volume. That shows there's volume of this momentum in the in the in the in that zone. So what I'm waiting for now is for price to create liquidity here. Price will just go up, you know, fake people that want to fake people to buy and people will keep on buying, buying and all that. So I'm, what I'm wanting to do is price to create liquidity and attract plenty of losses at this zone here. And when price eventually gets to my zone, I take a sell. So that's what I'm going to be doing for this USJPY and I think this will be all for this video. I will see you on the next one. Peace.